question and then you know how it will affect you moving forward generally um so yes but before we do that i'll just give a brief intro to who i am uh, what i do um, so my name is andrew randa as you can see on my screen uh, i'm a lecturer at the federal college of education Contabora, it's in niger state i also do a bit of freelance work for the university of joss in joss uh, I'm also the former media officer of Nigeria's on the 20 national team, that's the Flying Eagles. And I'm also a member of the Nigeria Football Federation media team. And I'm also the content creator stroke curator for the league management company who are in charge of the Nigerian Professional Football League. So most of the stuff you see uh, being put up by the NPSL as we call it on March days or non-March days, uh, everything comes from my table. Um, probably 90% from my table. The rest, I just uh, curate, uh, edit, uh, redit, and then put it on social media uh, for football lovers in Nigeria to see. So my, my life is centered around uh, visual communication, centered around sports and branding in that essence. Uh, yes, I'm married with three kids. Uh, usually, I, I normally say that at the end of most of my introduction. Uh, yes, so basically, that's about who I am. Uh, so I, I've done a lot of work around Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Uh, I spent a bit of time in the United Kingdom, uh, where I did my master's and also worked briefly before I came back home uh, to continue what I am doing right now. So I want to thank everybody for joining us, uh, and I hope that we'll be able to learn one or two things as we go on. Uh, so yes, uh, so basically, the major thing is what is content creation. Now, uh, I've always told people, you know, content creation is, is a lot. It's very, very diverse. Uh, for those of you that want to go uh, into different aspects, it could be TV, it could be radio, it could be print, it could be online. Content creation is at, at the core of what we are going to do, especially in 2022. Like a lot of things are changing. Uh, I remember back in the day, uh, I don't know how old you guys are, but uh, if you read Complete Sports, or uh, New Nigerian newspapers or standard back in the day, just, do, just wave high. International Football Report, uh, the reporter, Complete Sports. I'm talking of 19, from 1990 to 1995. If you were part of that clique or you, those are where you were able to get your stories, you can wave. Okay, I've seen Victor. Uh, I've seen Chuku Divine. I've seen Victor Harrison. The one with the Bundesliga. I would prefer to change your Bundesliga header to NPSL, but <laughs> that was my design. So, um, you know, back in the day, uh, I remember telling this story to a few people. Uh, before we could get sports stories or football related results, it would take us almost 24 hours, especially when Alkanem is playing a game in Maiduguri. It would take us a lot of time before, we, maybe 24 hours before we get the results. And then by that point, uh, most of the newspaper folks, they have to put out their editions for the next day without the results of LKNM. Because by 6 p.m., most editors will say, listen, I need your copy, you know, so that we prepare for tomorrow's news, so that by midnight or maybe 2, 2, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., the newspapers are done and they start sending it across the country. So when people wake up in the morning, they will be able to find the newspaper. So creating content at that point was very, very, very difficult, it was very, very exhausting. Now, the internet has changed the game completely. From, I'm not saying the newspapers don't work again, they do. But the game has shifted, and most of it has shifted to online. So you begin to ask yourself, as a sports person, as a media personality, how can I put out my content so that people will enjoy what I do, they will engage me, they will follow me, I'll get a good number of views, uh, comments, subscription and all that, so that brands can actually identify with me. I can get sponsorship to do most of the things that I do and be able to make money or be influential in that direction. So right now, the kind of content you put out, it doesn't necessarily have to be how to be football. It gives you an audience. I'll give you an example. Most of our kit makers, like Sabinus, um, you know, he started, Sabinus did not start yesterday or today. Sabinus started from a long while. He was on stage in school based on his story that I heard, and he gradually started making him for himself. But he didn't blow, quote unquote, 
until he came online and started putting out some very, very interesting content. And that content was able to help him to grow his fan base. And now he's even getting uh, deals with uh, DSTD and a few other companies around. There's also Taoma, um, the skit maker, that lady. She's done a lot of things, uh, you know, lots of followers and everything about online presence these days is numbers. Once you have the numbers, a lot of things will work for you. Brands will want to work with you. And you can sit down in the comfort of your home and make your money, make your life. So content creation is, is, is diverse. Um, so whatever it is you are going to do as a news person, as a media person, uh, once you create that persona for yourself, that personality, it also opens a lot of doors for you. I'll use myself as an example. Um, I don't have a million followers on, on social media, but the, the creative content that I put out is very unique. Not too many people um, are into sport graphics in Nigeria. I think I was the first that started maybe uh, started properly, quote and unquote, maybe about nine, 10 years ago. There are a lot of younger guys that are doing much more better than I am, I must confess. The graphics is very, very brilliant, you get. But because I've already carved a niche for myself, uh, the presence is there. The money is not there the way I want, you know, but the presence is there and that recognition is there. And it has also brought me a whole lot of, um, will I say appointments? Like, I, I want to believe that the reason why I got appointed by the NFF is because of my, my social media skills and my content creation skills. So that was able to give me that opportunity to work with the NFS, to travel around the world and do the things I love to do, you get. So sometimes I know money is good, but sometimes money is not everything. And again, at the end of the day, some of my connections I've made via my connection to the NFS and my travels around the world has enabled me to network and you know meet a lot of people that actually helped me everywhere I travel in the world. So it's, it's very, very important in that sense. I'm just giving you a background of what content creation has done for people. I've given you an example of Sabinus. I've given an example of Taoma. Uh, there are lots of them on social media these days. There's Mr. Macaroni. Um, uh, there's, uh, uh, what's this other guy's name? Brent Jota. Uh, there are a lot. There's even uh, this funny dude, uh, Josh. Josh, too funny. It was when most of them got online that they started blowing up. So what you do online and the presence that you bring for yourself online, the kind of content you put online will go in a long way to determine how people perceive you and if you are going to blow again, quote and unquote, or not. Uh, I hope you are following. Uh, so what is content creation, uh, if, I may, um, if I may ask? Uh, let me put this to... Uh, Kelvin Wilson. Kelvin, you can unmute your mic and answer my question. I need to pick one lady and one man. So, Joy Obede, John Obede and Kelvin Wilson, please unmute your mic. I'll start with Kelvin, if you can hear me. Kelvin, in your own words, no pressure. In your own words, Kelvin, what do you think content creation entails? Or what does it mean? Uh, the same question to Joy. So if you can hear me kindly, unmute your mic. So, or the host can unmute their mic so they can answer our questions before we go ahead. Kelvin Wilson and Joy Obede. If you can hear me, just raise your hand and then uh, you answer the question and then we'll continue. All right, Joy, you can speak. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Content creation, in my own understanding, is simply putting out information for the sake of entertainment, education, and any other purpose. But most of the time, it's mostly put out in a way that people can be entertained. And it's not usually long. It's different types of content, but consumable content are usually short. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. I like that. Very, very brilliant. Uh, I don't know if Kelvin is here. Kelvin, are you here? Okay, so Kelvin is... Kelvin, we soon. If you're here, you can unmute your mic and speak. Or any other person that wants to contribute can speak as well. 
Divine, your hand is up. Are you there? If you are there, his hand has been up for a very long time. I don't know what he's trying to do. Or maybe he actually did that and forgot. Anyway, um, what 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 uh Joy said was very, very brilliant uh, and quite apt, so I must add. Uh, so content creation basically is curating ideas and putting them into a visual format that can be either entertaining, educative, informative, you know, across region. Uh, so there are content creations that are in short form and then you have long form. So what we normally get on social media these days, especially is the short form. But there are also long form type uh, content that have been put, especially on YouTube and most video uh, based uh, apps that you can actually uh, go out, get tutorials or whatever it is. And they have a large following. But what we have these days, especially in Nigeria, is short form uh, content that is just to capture your imagination, you know, send out the information, entertain you, and then educate you. So Joy is very correct. It's, it's content creation basically is the process of gathering ideas around the place and fusing them such that it makes a lot of meaning and it, it creates a persona for the person, it sends out information, it educates people, and then it gives them, the audience an opportunity to engage with the person either uh, through the video you have put out or ideas they have uh, via uh, comment sections or whatever it is. And you can just list it out either as a video or as a blog post or infographics or even proper animation or graphics or whatever it is, in different formats. But the key thing here is to, to decimate information, uh, to educate your followers, to entertain your followers more or less. So it can be either one of the three or two of the three or even one of the three. Any of those is, is, is quite enough. I know a lot of kit makers these days that uh, do funny stuff, but inside the funny stuff, you could get uh, information and then a bit of education uh, inside that. So basically, it's just about getting ideas around the place, curating them and fusing them together, uh, you know, to be able to make uh, sense. Uh, so people can actually see what you're doing or what you're trying to, the message you're trying to send across or what you're trying to portray. Now, I've said, uh, you know, what does a content creator do? I just enumerated a little bit. I said uh, it could be to entertain, it could be to educate, it could be to, even for the content creator to express his opinion on a certain societal issue. You know, we know people do stuff to talk about domestic violence, talk about even politics that we're in right now. Some kit makers, some content creators do stuff related to uh, the political terrain that we are right now, telling people not to sell their votes, what to do, what not to do. So uh, that, that's about that. So content creation has to do with, you know, pick here, pick there, pick there, fuse them together in a way that it makes sense uh, by, you know, educating, informing, and enlightening people. Um, so what, what does it necessarily take to be a content creator? That's the next thing we're going to talk about. Now, anybody, like I said, can be a content creator. But what will stand you apart? from other content creators is what I've always asked people to think about. What will make you unique? And that uniqueness is what will drive clients towards you, what will drive brands towards you, what will drive people towards your page. Uh, last week, there was a poll. I think there was a poll about four kit makers and people are like, which of these four kit makers would you, you know, you have to pick one among the four. You wouldn't want to do content again. I think Sabinus was there, Brain Jota was there, uh, Josh Too Funny was there, like four of them. And a lot of people were picking Brain Jota and they were giving their reasons. Nobody picked Sabinus not to make skits again because what Sabinus does is very, very unique. And I'll tell you what I think. Uh, apart from the fact that Sabinus is funny, he has some key phrases and some key words that have caught up with people. They even use it outside conventional social media. Who can tell me some of the phrases that, that those that actually follow Sabinus, uh, who can tell me one or two phrases that Sabinus uses that actually become a slang, some, like a fad that people use these days? Uh, where is Victoria? Okay, fortune. <laughs> fortune. Give me, give, me, just give me one so that everybody can uh, join. Why now? I wanted fortune some, to say something. Something huge. Something huge, thank you. Another one, uh, Tonye, where's Tonye? Is Tonye here? Or oh, Emilia, Emilia Tonye? Yes, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, uh, another one from you, sir. 
70 years old man. Exactly. And then one last one. Let's pick a last one. Let's pick a last one. Uh, Chibu is it? They never leave you. <laughs> Nigeria is not for you. I like this class. You guys are brilliant. I, I love this class. I love this class. Okay. They have left you. You know, there, there's a lot. They have left you behind. 70 years old man. You know, those things are really, really you know, very, very, and they are very catchy phrases. Things that we use in our everyday life. You know, you go to a football field, you're watching players train. And, you know, somebody makes a mistake. And the next person, like, look at him, 70 years old man. Those phrases are very catchy. You know, hello, I see, I've seen another one from Victor. Uh, Victor. Uh, how are you? How is the family? That kind of stuff. It's very, very important. And he has incorporated it into his ass. And he's putting, it's, it's, you know, I've not seen too many skit makers that have that kind of um, effect on people's everyday communication skills. You know, when you're talking to your mates or your stuff like that, you get to hear all things. And then his facial expressions is one of the most viable things that people do not even look at a lot. When his video ends, there's what he normally does. That dark shade, the color gray changes to dark, uh, a dark shade at the end of most of his videos. And that facial expression, I can never get tired of it. It always hits me in the right place. And I don't know if Sabinus has a team or he does everything himself. What he puts out, his mannerisms, the language, the phrases, and the things that he uses are very, very good. You know, I know Mr. Macaroni has a few, hello, are you there? You know, that kind of stuff, you know. But personally, I don't know Sabino, he's not my friend anyway. Uh, but when I look through the internet and I see some of the things that they do, Sabino resonates with me in a lot of ways. Uh, some I've already mentioned to you guys. So the issue is what stands you apart from other content creators? What kind of stuff do you put out? How do you measure the effects of the things that you put out? How does it generate revenue for you? How does it bring out uh, uh, followers, fans, and um, subscription for you? And like I earlier said, numbers is everything on the internet. The more numbers you have, the more you get uh, people to follow you. And once brands see that you have a bit of following, they begin to uh, try to associate with you, try to make it to create kits for them and do a whole lot of stuff. Now, there was something I mentioned. First of all, you have to be unique. You have to be unique. It's possible that people may do drama, I mean, sorry, acting or whatever it is, but you have to find a way to be unique in your own niche. You need to ask yourself, what am I good at, first of all? You might be good at singing songs. So you can decide, okay, I want to go on TikTok. What I will do is to become a cover singer. So I'll pick a song from the video, for example, and then try to make it in my own way and put it on TikTok, short form, which is what TikTok is all about. And then gradually you try to be as unique as possible or do something that people will be able to resonate with. At least, not everyone, but a large number of people. So TikTok, for example, uh, is one part. Even though I hardly take TikTok videos anyway, I just do it for fun, me and my kids, uh, you know, just to stop out there. And then you need to ask yourself, if I'm into writing, what kind of creative writing do you do? Do you write about relationships? Like if you're into podcasting, what kind of podcast do you do? Um, I follow I follow Zikoko a lot. Who knows Zikoko? If you know them, just just wait in a casual way. If you know Zikoko, great. Uh, Joy Joy says she does. Uh, Zikoko, uh, the, when when they started the website, it was full of interesting stories. Life stories, love stories, work-related stories, family stories, different kind of stories. And those stories were really, really interesting. And it made me start following them. And all of a sudden, they switched to, they do a lot on, on YouTube. I just found them out recently. They talk about things, bring parents and kids. There's a long form, there's a short form. And they're gradually gaining a lot of followers. So what they do is unique. And they also have, uh, they also have a, a there's this thing that they do where people come, they give you an open platform to confess certain things, but they don't put your name. So it's anonymous, yeah? So they ask people to send in their worst things that happened to them sexually, uh, their worst family crisis, their biggest secrets and stuff like that, but they don't put your name. And so they put it into slides. Uh, you see them on Twitter, you see them on Instagram, you see them on YouTube, and those kind of things. People love to read stories like that. Those kind of things are very engaging. I'm able, 
is very, very huge in Nigeria. I'm not asking you to be inside blog. I don't like them. I'm not asking you to be just lover. I don't like them. But the truth of the matter is, the way Nigerians are, we love Amebo, we love gossip. If you go to Insta blog, you see a lot of things. Tunde Edna, you see a lot of... Tunde Edna does a bit of good things. He's not the Amebo type person. But you see Linda Ikeji, she's a multi millionaire because of what she does. So anywhere there's news, anywhere there's gossip, she goes there. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you what to do, but those type of content creation is not exactly what I love to do. Uh, because, I mean, nobody wants his business out there anyway, but other people thrive on other people's business and other people's misfortunes. They make a lot of money through it and all that, but I would not advise anybody to do that. But again, at the end of the day, I cannot tell you what to do or what not to do. So there are different areas that you can get and make yourself very unique. I'll give you an example again. Uh, there's uh, BR Report, Bleacher Report. is an online platform for... Uh, football related news. Um, they are in the UK, I believe. There's the UK and the US branch. They do a lot of creative graphics. It could be cartoon, cartoon like stuff, you know, that uh, can really do a lot to, to bring people like me, you know, people like me that love graphics, love animation. They do a lot of wonderful work. So if you're on Twitter, go to Adbia Report on Twitter and see some of the things they do. They have a large number of followers because people like football and they do a lot of uh, they are very unique they are infographics they are they are they are cartoon type illustrations uh the animation it's lovely you get and so uh if you're if you're on twitter you can go there and follow them and see the kind of things they do uh, so it's all about carving a niche for yourself so number one thing for you to do hello can you hear me joyce Yes, sir, we can hear okay. okay. Victoria, sorry, I said Joyce. Uh, so you need to ask yourself, what are you interested in? That's okay. one. What are you very good in? That's okay. cool. What kind of audience am I trying to target? For me, I mean, like I earlier said, I'm a football person. So my target audience is football and basketball. My niche, that's my niche area. I try to create content and news in and around that. Um, if you go to my Twitter at Randa Andrew, most of the things I do is related, especially these days that the Nigerian season is off and then there was a transfer window in Europe. I bring news of transfers of Nigerian footballers. So, especially in the local scene and the international scene. So, a lot of people are always waiting to see. Uh, uh, I'm not Fabrizio. For those that know Fabrizio, Fabrizio is, is incredible, to be honest. That guy has crossed over a million followers on Twitter. He's the number one transfer guru in the world. But what I try to do is, my niche area is Nigerian footballers, home and abroad. So I get a call from many people, uh, Andy, who is moving where? This is what I had, is it true? So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of followers related to that area. Agents call me, bro, see what they have on your social person, they move and all that, you know? So right now as I speak to you, there's a Nigerian footballer that is going to Egypt to sign a two year deal and, you know, from uh, uh, a club in Dubai. He'll be in Nigeria uh, this weekend, and then he'll fly out to Egypt on Sunday or Monday to sign his deal. So I already know this, and I might put it, okay, somebody just said Fabrizio has 11 million. So you can imagine. I don't think any skit maker in Nigeria has 11 million followers. So people love football. So Fabrizio is there, you get. So, but for me, I'm, I'm not in Europe, so I don't get most of the news, but I can tell you that if it is Nigeria, uh, Nigerian players abroad, eight out of 10, I can tell you what is going to happen. You know, I'm gradually getting to 10 over 10, but right now I'm between seven over 10 and 10 over 10. You know, uh, just this morning, I was able to speak to somebody in Eyimba and I've gotten, a lot of people are asking who and who has moved to Eyimba. For those of you that know Eyimba of Aba, this morning I was able to get who and who has gone there, but they asked me not to release that yet. So that's where I am getting them. Yeah, I'm a local champion. So <laughs> that's where I'm going uh, at the moment. So you need to ask yourself, what can I study? Not just what can I study, what can I study do? Then how I go take Duan? Then how will people engage with me? Because engagement is also very, very important. So if you're a music person, you ask yourself, what kind of music will I put out that people will listen to? How will I put out the music? How will I allow the music to flow on the net? 
How will I look at the metrics? How will I influence the metrics? How will, you know? So you need to begin to look at some of these things. But the most important thing is to know what you are doing and to try to do it a little bit different from what other people are doing. Yes, when you start something in Nigeria, normally people start copying you or doing it in another way, but you have to constantly invent and reinvent yourself so that you try to uh, stand above uh, you know, people. It's very, very important so that you will not be, uh, okay, uh, maybe Victor is this or Monday is this or Monday is that. How do you put yourself out there? How do you make yourself better than the next person? For instance, if we say Victoria and Olubumi are the same, uh, do the same thing, what will Victoria now do? What will she add? What will she remove from what she's doing to make her stand out from what Bumi does? So those are the things you have to constantly ask yourself. You have to constantly look for ways to invent and reinvent yourself. Uh, for me, apart from transfer news that I create and put out, I also do a bit of graphics to go with it. Um, I do a lot of uh, infographics that many people don't do in Nigeria, just one or two I've seen around, especially on social media that do that. I also try to bring exclusives that people don't get from other people. So when I get that, that news, I, I curate it and I create a content so that people will know ah, this guy, if they find better news, authentic better news, this is the page to go. This is the person's handle to go. This person knows this, this person knows that. I can hit him up, this, this, and that. So sometimes I get invited to a lot of things. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we don't monetize things as we should. So it's a bit of a problem now. We're hoping that it will improve as time goes on. So people can call you, uh, come and do a lecture for us on this thing, uh, come and do a presentation on this thing, uh, you know. But my own house, okay, uh, it is not online. You have to pay my, my uh, flight ticket or pay my hotel bill or whatever, whatever, if the person is my friend. So sometimes I get paid, uh, my rate card for uh, campaign, uh, it depends on what you are giving, but the flat rate for a campaign for a week, a minimum of 10 posts or whatever is 150K. So uh, it's either you, you, you take it or you leave it because you don't have to price yourself that low. You know? So those kind of things have actually uh, opened uh, doors for me. So people know that, okay, uh, we want to do a seminar based on this, based on this, based on that. Uh, see the person that we're going to call. And you charge people for your time and for your expertise. So those are other areas too. It's not just the payment online, but uh, the recognition that you get is also very important. That recognition can open a lot of doors for you. So the basic thing that I've said for this particular part is know what you're doing understand what you are doing and be passionate about what you are doing. The beginning will always be very, 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 very tough. You know, you're like an entrepreneur. So you have to be able to have patience and believe in what you are doing. You have to put yourself out there, believe what you are doing. Even if the results are not coming online, keep pushing, keep pushing, because that online, that will not push it to happen for you offline. That's why it that happened for me. I, I, most of the money, that I've made is offline than online. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was in Poland in 2019 for the FIFA Under 20 World Cup. I was putting out a lot of content um, regarding Nigeria, uh, South Africa, and Senegal. Uh, so, and because of that, I met somebody in the airport who, like, okay, yeah, this person, you know, a white guy in in in, the, in Warsaw at the airport. We're coming back to Nigeria. I was like, ah, I like what you do. I like the way you portray this player. Who is this player? Like, da, da, da. I told him this is the person. Uh, he said, okay, there's a club, Legia. Legia also uh, looking to buy a, a midfielder, a strong midfielder. And that's how we started talking. And before three months, the boy had moved. And, and, you know, just for me, connecting them to the boy. And of course, I had a small deal with them. I said, if the boy is going to go and sign, I will have exclusive media rights to whatever he's going to do throughout the duration of the signing and the presentation, they said no problem. So, and again, because I introduced them, after the whole thing, I was able to get about uh, 2,000 euros uh, from that deal just for introducing the boy to them. And then all the exclusive content from his, uh, his unveiling and everything, I was the first person to get it in the whole of Africa. And I put that out before other people picked it up. So uh, right now, I still have contact with them. So that person, if they are looking for any African footballer, or they want to sign an African footballer, they first of all call me, bro, do you know this person? 
Can you give us a lowdown of 411 about this person? Does he have injury, an injury history? What can he do? Does he drink? Does he like women? Blah, blah, blah. You know, clubs do a lot of research going into whoever it is they are going to sign or not. So, and because I follow a lot of Nigerian footballers home and abroad, I'll be able to give them a bit of uh, history about the player. But the truth of the matter is, I, I, I will never badmouth a Nigerian player because we all know uh, if player will go sign abroad, it's a good thing for the player, it's a good thing for his family. So I won't badmouth him. All I'm going to do is, bro, this is what I had. This is what I'm going to tell them. I know you did this, I know you did that, but now you are going to a more responsible uh, environment in the sense that there's accountability for everything you do. If you misbehave, you're going to get fined. Whatever you do is going to be taken into account. Not in Nigeria, you will go back person, and that's all. It does not happen like that in most of these European clubs. So, me, I have given them what they need to know. I've even hyped you and overhyped you. Please go and sign. Make your money, take care of your family, do what you need to do. So online, offline is very important. You need to find a way to sync all of those together. Now, some of the skills that you need to have as a content creator are editing skills. It could be text. It could be video. It could be audio. Your editing skills, you need to find a way to be able to uh, improve your skills. I've told people, as a media person, as a media person, your skill set must not be limited to one skill. If you want to be on radio, don't be satisfied with being on radio or alone. It might be what you want to be, but having an extra skill set will set you apart from the person in the next radio group or the person in the next. Do you write? Do you edit video? Do you curate or uh, create videos? What is it that you do that you put out? How do you put out yourself as a radio personality on social media? How do you hack yourself? How do you hack your, your, your programs? So on. How do you create a personality around yourself? When I was doing radio, a lot of people thought I was six foot five because of how I portray myself on radio, how I talk, how authoritative I am, how assertive I am how convincing I am and the, the, the information I had to give people on radio. A lot of people, when they see me, they'll be like, ah, we thought your six foot five, six foot six, big, huge, broad chest, six pack. And I'm like, no, this is me. I'm five foot nine, five foot 10. I'm not six foot five. And you know, a lot of people say I have a feminine voice and all that. So they keep imagining. So that mystery around my person actually helps a lot. I'll give an example. There's uh, there's a lady in Port Harcourt, maybe you know her. I think she's one of your, your, your lecturers, one of the series queens uh, in Port Harcourt. Um, she, she, she's managed to create a persona around herself. You know, apart from the radio that she does, she's been able to create a good persona about herself, create a personality about herself, and such that she's able to host uh, programs in Port Harcourt, and she gets paid for it. So people know her now. I think it's Honey Ojuku. I said Queen. I think it's Honey. Yeah? And I met her last time I was in Portugal during the River Sonata Bombay United game. And I, I like what she's doing with her page on Twitter. She's creating a very good persona for her. So she's actually cute, but it's not about her beauty. She's creating, if you see the kind of tweets she put out, she puts out her work, what she does, how she does it. She creates a good persona around herself such that the following is increasing. People are knowing her outside what she does in radio. Radio is a niche, yeah? But she's creating a persona for herself outside radio. So there's the, the, there's the radio skills that she has, obviously. And then there's the interpersonal skills that she has, obviously. And then she's building a brand for herself around what she does. And that's what I always tell people to try and do. You know, create a brand for yourself outside your normal everyday work life. So for example, Let's say uh, Victoria is a script writer. Now, we know she's a script writer, but what else can she do apart from the script writing? How does she create a persona around herself for the script writing? How does she put out her script writing on social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter? Does she talk about her everyday life? What are the behind the scenes stuff that she does for herself? How? And you know, sometimes I tell people, a lot of people think I'm serious. So I divide my social media into different things. My Facebook, is for uh, uh, work, family, and football. My Twitter is strictly 
football 95%. My TikTok is football 10%, uh, family 50%, personal 40% or there about. So that people understand there's a human being behind that face, that random footy, or this football self that everybody calls me. You know, so everywhere I go, people like this football self, because that's uh, the slogan that I've created for myself, the hashtag. So if you go on social, on, on, on Google now, you, you click hashtag this football self, D-I-S, this is D-I-S, F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L, this football self. I can guarantee you that 98% of what you're going to get comes from me. If you Google Randa Futi, it comes from me. So there's a, there's a human being part of me. There's a work part of me. I'll give you a funny story. Uh, one time, one of my friends, she's in Bauchi. She's a Hajia. She's in Bauchi. I think she lost her phone. And then she hit me up on Facebook. She's like, bro, I lost my phone. Can you send me back your number? I didn't save it. So I was wondering why uh, she was so curious to, know, to get my, uh, my number again. And she was like, ah, bro, you don't know. Me and my children, eh, when we wake up, we go to your WhatsApp status. I was like, why? That my WhatsApp status is, is entertainment for them. I mean, they're singing one song with my child, or I'm driving and doing some funny stuff, and they, they love it. They love what I put up. In fact, one of them was telling me, I should open a YouTube channel and take all my WhatsApp status content <laughs> and put it on, on, on YouTube that's going to sell. You know, I, I didn't even think about it like that, you get. But it made a lot of sense to me. And I never knew, to be honest with you, that all the nonsense and the rubbish that I do on my WhatsApp status is actually entertainment for her and her kids. And she said they follow it every day, especially when I travel with the Super Eagles for, uh, for competitions or whatever it is. I put out a lot of stuff and she's like, one of the best moments she has is when I'm traveling and what my kids do to me before they pick my bag and put it in the car before I travel. Me and my kids, we have this special handshake that we do. Um, a lot of banter and stuff like that before I put my things in the car, before I go to the airport or whatever it is, or the, the park that I'm going. And I never knew. So at that point, she even gave me an idea. I was like, okay. So this funny, funny things I'm doing that I think is just to piss off. People actually like it. She was the first person to tell me. The other person was like, gross, I prefer the behind the scenes stuff that you put out that even Nigeria too, Liberia knew. When the players are eating, when you're juicing with the players, when you people are on the plane, when the plane lands, when they're checking into the hotel, when they come out for training, I want to hear some of the things the players are saying before they dress up to go into the pitch to train. You, to be honest with you, after I did that, the Nigeria, Cape, I mean, Nigeria Saltome game that would be uh, Saltome 10-0, that was when I knew that people actually liked things like that. Because I got a lot of, a lot of comments on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. People are like, ah, I like what you do. You know, I even did a story on my travel from getting to the airport in Abuja, waiting for the team to come, being with the team. How everybody was tired, waiting for the flight from 10, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. You know, uh, how the players were eating at the airport. All these funny things Alex Iwobi was saying to Leon Balogun, the banter between Ola I know, and uh, who was it? I think it was Alex too. And then Zaydu Sanusi speaking house with Shia Abdullahi, Ahmed Musa. So people like that kind of stuff. Yes, they want to watch Nigeria play, but behind the scenes stuff is what they like. So it gave me an idea. Uh, why don't you do some of these things? People like it. And it will generate a lot of following for you. There was something I put out on, uh, was it William Tuskakon? It was, it, was, it was on his mother's back. She, his mother is Dutch. She, she backed in like what an African mother would do. And that was my highest grossing post on Twitter for that particular month. It got more than 11K likes and a lot of retweets. I can't even remember now. So I was like, okay, people like things like this. People like stories. So these days I tell players, boy, boy I tell uh, Ahmed Musa is my friend. Ahmed, send me photos when you're 10 or 11 years old. I put it on Twitter. People like things like that. So as you go on, People know that, okay, when I go to Randa Street, I'm going to say a little bit of what I don't see on other people's page. That will put you apart. And I always tell people, what do you know apart from what people expect you to know? Think about this. What do you know apart from what people expect you to know? Let me even ask it. Uh, let me ask. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Where is Victoria? Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, let me ask you, Victoria. What do you know apart from what people expect you to know? Okay. Like my personal life and everything on social okay, media. Okay, let me ask you this directly. What, what did you study in school? I study history and international studies. Okay, so I will assume you have a degree in history and international studies. Not yet, almost. Okay, so I would expect that you know a bit of history and you know a bit of international relations. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so what do you know apart from history and international relations that can set you apart from your classmate who is also studying history and international relations? Okay, I I have idea on cybersecurity and also I have idea when it comes to health. I okay. I do everything that has to do with health. Like if you even go to my social media page, you see tips about being healthy, having a healthy life. And I'm also working with an organization. So I okay. think that's one. Brilliant. Those are the kind of things I like to hear. So for example, let me use Victoria Morrison as an example. She's hopefully, to get a degree in history and international relations uh, or international studies. Uh, but she has another skill set which has to do with health and cybersecurity, which is very, very, a lucrative thing in Nigeria or in, in the whole world as of now. So whatever she has can set her apart from the next uh, classmate who is basically more vested in history and international relations. So you also need to know as a, as a media person, as a content creator, you need to ask yourself, what stands me apart from the next person? Because obviously if you're a radio personality or a TV person, everybody knows that your work is centered around that and they expect you to know things around that. But what else can you do? Can you add writing to your skills? Can you add editing to your skills? Can you add podcasting to your skills? What kind of skill set do you have? How do you invent and reinvent yourself? Look, we're in 2022 now. Hmm? 20 years ago, the things that were happening 20 years ago were not happening now. Now, I am in my mid 40s, but people keep wondering, how do you manage to invent and reinvent yourself, to evolve? When I started my blog uh, 12 years ago, Twitter wasn't this big. But because I already had a, a, a notion that most of the things we do are going to shift online, especially for me in my field, how do I find space in that uh, to give myself a proper online presence? I started asking myself this one question. When uh, I did my graphics, and I asked myself, where do I be bring in my graphics? to football, which is my niche. How do I incorporate all of these things together to be able to make me stand out? And so I decided to say, okay, all these posters and whatever you see on Twitter these days, I started it way long before some clubs even started doing sport graphics and putting it on, on their social media. As of, 20, as of 2011, 2012, I already started doing that. But even a lot of, uh, clubs in Europe had not started that at that point. But now everybody is catching up. Every match day, the lineup you see, I started doing that a long, more than 10 years ago. The, the animated scores you see, all of those things, I started doing a long time. In fact, when you are watching matches, all these Real Madrid 1 that you see on your TV, Real Madrid 1, Arsenal nil, or something like this a long time ago, before at NTA job. Unfortunately, the technology was not very good to be able to put it on TV. But all the slides and the transitions that you see, all the opening credits, end credits, blah, blah, blah. I started doing that since 1999. I want to tell people they start laughing, but Nigeria didn't have the technology to be able to do it the way CNN or BBC would do it. But I started doing that a long time ago. So brings me back to the question now. What your skill set is very, very, very important. So you need to have editing skills. Whatever you're doing as a content creator, either video, audio, or even text, you need to be able to write a proper copy for you to be able to put your stuff out there. Then you need to understand the, the, how the algorithm for most of your social media works. Let me use Twitter as an example. 
How do you post? When do you post? Who is your target audience to post? Which uh, handles that are doing better than you, can you pick things from them and incorporate into your own? You have to think of all those. You have to do with the planning. See what I don't put, see what I don't curate. There are some times that once a breaking news comes out, especially for those of you that are on Twitter, uh, you're into football or music. Once there's a breaking news, an artist is releasing music by 12 a.m. You don't plan those ones. You just put it out there because it's in the moment. But there are some kind of news that you, you plan to put out at say 7.30 a.m. when people are just waking up. Yesterday on my WhatsApp, I put something related to, uh, I think it was Instagram, email, WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, and I asked people, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first app that you open? Let me ask three people now. Let me say the first two apps that you open when you wake up. Uh, let's see, who is online now? Uh, Fortune. Is Fortune here? And uh, we need to involve more people to talk. Uh, Victor Harrison. Victor, please un unmute your mic. Let me ask a bit of questions now so we can get a direction of where we're going. Okay, Fortune. Fortune, when you wake up in the morning and you pick your phone, I don't know whether you're a church person. I know most people go, they say a prayer or two and then brush. But I know a lot of people like uh, Victoria, if I, if I may pull her leg, they don't pick their phone and start going to Instagram. But uh, Fortune, what app do you, what first two apps do you open when you wake up, sir? First of all, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, okay, sir. And um, I think for the last month now, if it's two, if it's a month ago, I would say Facebook, but now it's WhatsApp and Instagram, WhatsApp, WhatsApp and Twitter, Instagram. WhatsApp and Twitter. Okay, WhatsApp and Twitter for Twitter, me. WhatsApp uh, and Twitter. WhatsApp yes. first, yeah. WhatsApp first, and then Twitter. Yes. Okay. Twitter. Uh, yes. Wilson. There's I call, who did I call again? Wilson and uh, who is the other person? Yeah, Victor. Where's Victor? Yeah, I'm the one talking now. Okay, sir. Uh, I like that Bundesliga thing. Do you know who? Do you know who that is on your 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 DP? The Bundesliga, the frame of the player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that that's actually my niche. Ah, uh, fantastic, fantastic. I like it. Um, so Victor, when the train is started, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before the training started, uh, Twitter used to be the first app I opened every morning, but um, I'm part of this training, so I have to open WhatsApp first to check when is the first lecture and the timing. So these days, since the, the training started, it's been WhatsApp, but um, WhatsApp and Twitter, basically, that's where I work more. Okay, brilliant. I like, I like that. Um, so let me pick one more person so, so I can give an insight to so why I'm asking this? Uh, da, 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 da. So I, I know Fortune said uh, WhatsApp, Twitter. You are also WhatsApp, Twitter, yeah? That's Victor, so two of them. Then we need a lady here. Uh, Jane, is there a lot? Jane, please unmute your, unmute your mic. Um, is Jane here? I'm here, sir. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, so when, when you wake up in the morning, what are the first two apps that you run to? Uh, for me, it's WhatsApp and YouTube. WhatsApp and YouTube. Okay, good. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So um, basically, I, I put out this thing on my status, and I, I wanted to get an idea of what people like, uh, you know. And to be honest with you, almost 90% said WhatsApp. So I had an idea. Um, what time do people wake up? What time do I wake up? What kind of music people want to hear? And then it gave me an idea also how to curate my, my WhatsApp content, especially in the early hours of the morning, and then also Twitter. So most people are like WhatsApp, and then they check their emails. You know, they check their notes to see if there's any work-related stuff, there's any information, and then uh, Twitter. So for, for what I was able to find out, people go to WhatsApp first, then email, and then Twitter. So that's a very good idea for me to be able to know how and when to put out information. And again, the average Nigerian, depending on where you live, uh, those in the South South will probably wake up after those in Lagos wake up. 
for obvious reasons anyway. <laughs> so Lagos people, 435, they are up. Uh, I would say Port Harcourt people, 536, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Kano people wake up seven o'clock, even though most of them go to pray by 530, but they go back to sleep and wake up 730. Just, my just people, uh, maybe 6, 6, 15, but if it is raining, they will even come at the nine o'clock, you know? So I don't know, wherever you are, you can just go to the text area, the chat area, and uh, I want everybody, please, in the chat area, just tell me where you are, and then what time, the average time that you wake up. So you can go to the chat, everybody, just drop a message, um, your first name, where you are, and then the average time that you wake up, uh, so that we can see, and then maybe at the end of the class, we'll be able to discuss <laughs> that, to give us an idea of, uh, you know, first of all, know where your audience are. If, you, if you're on just Twitter all the time, you know when they're going to wake up, and so whatever you're putting on the first series of things they're going to read on their feed. If you're a Potako person, you know, stuff like that. So please, first assignment, uh, go to your chat area and drop uh, your uh, your location, your name, location, and the average time that you wake up. Uh -huh. So uh, some of the skills I spoke about, like the different skills are very important. Then you also need to, to know how to research a bit. All of these things I am doing now, I'm also researching with you guys. So you, you'll be able to know which time my people for Benin, they wake up. For Lagos, waiting I go food, waiting I go food, waiting they go like it. So you have to do a research, and the research can also get to do with you. Look at what people are putting out. You go and see the retreat, the engagement especially. Waiting these people they put, where they make people engage them. There's a latest trend now on Twitter that people are doing giveaways, and I noticed that those that do giveaway they get a lot of followers because people. In fact, for those on Twitter, eh, I noticed that there are a lot of new accounts created every day just for giveaway. For people looking for giveaway, you know, and those, and I noticed like somebody that had three thousand followers one month ago now has almost seven thousand, and the only thing he does is football related, and then a lot of giveaways, recharge cards, money, and stuff. So that he's trying to grow that followership in that way, you know. It might not be organic as per se, but again, he's doing the, the work. Then you have to research all of these things so that you know what people like and know what to put especially um, around your niche area. Then your, your SEO skills, that search engine optimization skills, you have to find a way that you make sure that whatever people are looking for, your own is up there. So for example, you, look, you have to search for which hashtag. If you're a movie person or you're a cybersecurity person, which kind of hashtag related to cybersecurity is up there in the SEO, the search engine optimization. So if you type on Google, what are the keywords that will take you off in the first five or first three searches on uh, results for searches on Google. So you need to research which hashtags are trending for which area. If it is sports, if it is uh, like yesterday, uh, those that watch uh, City vs. Borussia Dortmund, Ellen Haaland was trending for a lot of periods yesterday. So imagine if you put out a tweet and you hashtag uh, Haaland. So people that are searching for that, your own will also come up. So you need to find a way that you push it up so that even if your story is not related to Haaland, people can click and also read what you're also putting out. A lot of people do that. So they look for, for niche hashtags and that infuse it into their own tweets or their own posts so that it will take them up the, the ladder board on the SEO search, that search engine optimization, uh, SEOs, which is a, something that people need to be able to understand properly. Even me, myself, I'm still studying it to see how uh, I can use it to the best, uh, to the best of my ability. It's something that I'm still looking at myself. Uh, then content promotion. It's not enough to just put your content. If you have money, you can put, promote content on different uh, platforms. You know, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook ads, uh, Twitter can also give you a button to promote your, your, your tweet for a small amount. So it will go on everybody's tweet, not necessarily the people that follow you or people that are on your timeline. It goes to a lot of other places. So sometimes on Twitter, you see promoted tweets. No matter where you go, that tweet will also find a way to appear on your, on your timeline. You know? And then data analysis skills too. So every app that you have, every app that you have has a back end that you can go as a back end that you can go and see what you are doing and analyze what you are doing. Twitter has Twitter analytics. 
YouTube has its own, almost everyone. So you go to your back end and you see how your posts are doing. You see uh, uh, infographics of the flow, depending on which areas of the flow that uh, you want to check. When it will show you how your post is uh, working. So there's a whole lot that we can do, but uh, you know, our time is a bit spent. Uh, so this time around, I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm going to pause here for now, and then people can ask questions before I round up. So the floor is open now, Victoria. Uh, those that want to ask questions can ask questions, you take some answers, and then I'll round up by giving, uh, I'll drop a few links that I think people can use to uh, improve their content creation. And then hopefully in the next two or three months, before the end of the year, some of you hit me up and say, this is the growth or progress I've made via my social media. I know social media, uh, you know, it's for banter and for gist and all that, but you can actually take one out and say, okay, this particular one, it is Twitter. This is where I want to build my media related content. This is where I want to build my brand. This is where I want to build my persona. So you can use other things for your other uh, crews, like young people like to call it these days. Then take just one or two and say, okay, this is for business. My Facebook is for cruise, Twitter for business, or Twitter for cruise, Facebook for business, YouTube business, TikTok cruise. So you need to be able to separate some of these things so that at least, if you, like me on Twitter, it's 90% for what, 10% cruise. So you need to find a way around it. So I'll open the floor for questions right now uh, for those that want to ask. Victoria, the floor is open for folks now to ask questions. So I can answer them and then we'll round up. All right, everybody, we, we know how we do it here. Yeah, let's do things orderly. If you have a question, you can indicate by raising your hand or drop it in the chat box and it will be attended to. Thank you. Okay, so for me, mm. my question is this. Like you know, some some applications like the Twitter, the Twitter have a kind yeah. of environment that is a bit difficult if you really don't know how to play around it. And in the case where you don't really have anybody, like before, I could know how to use Twitter. I yeah. asked so many persons, and they were like, "Ah, Twitter, I don't know. I'm not even a social media person, no." I don't mm. do Twitter at all. Mm. How, how do you get to sort those issues out for someone like that? In case you have issues with setting up your account and knowing some things to do, knowing what to post, because I understand that if you, there are restricted posts, if you post some things, they will remove it or they will even, they will even block you uh, for a while before they give you permission again. So for people mm. that don't know how to run around and play with other, what do they do in setting up a business account or any kind of account? It's very simple. It's just like every other uh, app or every other social media tool. Uh, you just go to Twitter and check their help uh, section. It will give you all the rules and regulations. There's also a section on Twitter. If you go to twitter.com, there are different places that you can check and see uh, what they like, what they don't like. So you don't run foul of the things that they don't want to do. One of the most important things is they don't like plagiarism, uh, not plagiarism per se. They don't like anything that infringes on anybody's copyright. So for example, if I make a video and I put it online and then you carry that video and put it without credit, sometimes yeah, the credit might not be enough. So whatever you have to put has to be original. Sometimes you can put pictures. Pictures is considered fair, fair content. But if you take a video, for example, if you're into cybersecurity and Elon Musk does a video for his company, you now copy the video or download the video and copy it and now put it on your own page and try to pack it up as your own. You're definitely going to have problems uh, with Twitter, you get. So for, for, for the rest of your question, all you need to do is just go on uh, on twitter.com, sign up for an account, and then you open to your settings, you get to find everything that uh, you need to know about what to post, what not to post. Uh, so for example, now for me, when I first started, 
I wanted a situation where I'll just engage with my friends. So for example, if you and uh, Benson are friends, you can banter on Twitter. But at the point I decided, no, this is where I want to use to promote some of the things I do. So for instance, if you're into cybersecurity, you can post cybersecurity related issues as for Nigeria. When you keep posting constantly, your, your tweets are going to go around people who have almost the same interest with you. And Twitter also tell you, okay, this thing you're posting, and see people around you that post similar things like you. You can now follow them. If they like what you're posting, they'll follow you back. So that's how you begin to build a network for yourself. You begin to build. For example, like I said, football is, is a very popular thing in Nigeria. So once I post anything on football, uh, it goes to on my timeline, on my feed, and then somebody will see it, especially if the person is a football person and has the same similarities. Or I follow accounts that have to do with football and I start tweeting football or cybersecurity. The algorithm on Twitter will take my tweet, put it on my feed, and then suggest to me people who do the same with me and ask me to follow them if I want to. If you follow them, you keep increasing your followership and then people that follow you. So along that line, I can guarantee that somebody will follow you based on what you tweet. If it is interesting, it will. But before you do all of that, you have to go and find a way uh, on that help site of, uh, of Twitter. I'm going to post a few links for you so you can actually, uh, you know, go around. It's called Twitter for, for beginners. For those of you that are not very vibrant on Twitter, I'm going to post a few uh link so that you can see uh you know and then start up your life in twitter and i can tell you it's a very interesting place for you to be able to go because there are a lot of nigerian um nigerian users on twitter so first of all you set up your profile you like i earlier said you want to follow accounts that are similar to what you do and then you understand the twitter uh lingo the kind of language that's being used on twitter you look for hashtags very interesting hashtags like i said for example, if you're a football person, Victoria, if you do stuff, you now write a Haaland, which was trending last night. So there's a part of Twitter that shows you the trends. So you can put those trends so that people will be able to, if they're searching for Haaland, for example, your own tweet might come under Haaland and then they see what you write. Like, okay, this one might not do the, the Champions League or football, but I like what this person did, and then they follow you. So gradually like that, you keep on um, improving yourself. You can also use Twitter tools. On Twitter.com, there are Twitter tools that you can use on Twitter to help you push your, yeah, your Twitter profile so that people can see what you do and maybe like what you do and all that. So uh, you can also have pinned tweets. So for example, you can talk about what you do, introduce yourself, talk about what you do, and then pin what you do on your Twitter. On my Twitter, there was a gesture. I forgot to tell you that I also design gestures. I'm a sports skills designer. So in 2018, I designed a kit, uh, a, a prototype, a mock-up, and then all of a sudden the thing went viral. So if you go to my Twitter at Randa Andrew, it's my pinned tweet. Uh, people are really excited about the design I did, and they're like, ah, you know, that can cost me a lot of trouble anyway from Nike, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> so those are some of the things uh, you can do, uh, you know, to start. But it's very interesting. Once you go to Twitter.com, I've already placed a link for you, Twitter for beginners. So you see how to register your, how to open an account, how to register, and then how to start tweeting. And then the hashtags you can use, then the kind of people that are uh, in the same niche with you, uh, you can follow and then gradually start from there. Like I earlier said, um, it's not going to be easy. You know, it's not going to be easy, but you just keep tweeting. And then before you know it, your followers will blow up. And then gradually uh, you become a brand of your own on Twitter. So I hope I've done justice to your, your question Victoria. i've dropped a link yes. for you uh, on the chat area so maybe after the you can just speak it now use it on your browser or after the the class you can uh, take a look at it and then hopefully you should be able to help me uh, you know i'm also going to post a link from twitter seven steps to get started on twitter and then that that even official on twitter themselves it's a very interesting place you know so I, I employ everybody to have a Twitter account, especially if you're a media person. People need to know what you're doing and, and how you are doing it, you know, and then so that uh, you can create a presence for yourself, media-wise. Let's not be satisfied with just doing our work. 
we also as media people also need to uh, create a brand for ourselves. Like I used uh, Honi Ojuku uh, as an example. There are many guys. Aquarium Man, uh, China Cheru is, is a big brand in Port Harcourt. And uh, his persona around the Aquarium thing has you know, done a lot for him. Um, so I'm using Port Harcourt people in Benin, the volume of Patola in Benin. Uh, he's not very, he's on Twitter, but he, the persona around him in Benin it has given him a bit of edge when it comes to sports and stuff like that in, in Benin. In Kaduna, there's Mowi. They call him Moise, but his name is Mohamed Jesus. He's a Edo boy, but he was born and bred in Kaduna. Moise, maybe some of you know him on Twitter. Uh, in Jos, uh, I'm there. Uh, in Lagos, there are a lot of them. Charles and Azodo, Super Sports, Gordon and Akena, uh, you know, Bode Ubuntu is a basketball person, so he's, he's a niche guy in basketball. Once you want to get to hear latest Nigerian news after basketball, you know where to go. So all of these guys are people that, you know, had the opportunity to, you know, create a brand. Uh, Fortune, your hand is up. I see you have a question, sir. Fortune, if you can hear me, you can unmute your mic and then. Yes, yes. Um, okay, my question goes like this. Um, talking about content creating, like for me, I, I love football and I like, you know, giving information mm -hmm. in details. Definitely, there are. Where, where do you stay, sir? Where do you stay? I'm in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt, okay, sir. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Um, definitely, there are, um, there are different things going on, going on behind the 90 minutes football, you know. So people do love mm -hmm. entertainment, especially the, um, the football part, you know, behind the scenes, like you said earlier. You know, me, I like... Um, searching about young players you know how they will grow what they will be in the next few years where they will play you know whether they will be injury prone and all that you know yeah. and you 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 say something close to that that you usually do that you know about players especially in nigeria yeah, when they are going to um, travel and um, where they are um, transferring them to and all that. So I want to ask, you know, creating content, where can you sort, you know, for all this kind of information that you know that it will, it will be is it will be right, you know, you know, you can't go out there and put out a content that that is not that is that is wrong. The information is wrong. So where can you find these informations and all that that you put in your content and all that that you know that is right. You know, the information is right. Okay, uh, Fortune, for me, uh, let me use myself as a case study. Uh, I've been able to build a, 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 I've been able to build a history for myself in the Nigerian League for about 19 years now, 19, 20 years now. So I've been in the system and because I've been in the system and I've proven to people what I can do, it's very, very easy for me to get information, even from the players, from their managers, from their agents, from the clubs, because they know me and they respect me. Uh, you know, and because they see what I do online constantly. And so some of them want, want even a situation where I promote and I hype their club. For example, there's a reason why I asked you where you live. For example, now there's a lot happening in, in, in Port Harcourt related to Rivers United. Now, if you want to be a, a number one go-to guy in River State, you need to first of all start with the things around Rivers. You need to be able to let people know they can trust you. You need to be able to cover the thing and cover them positively. People need to be aware of who is Fortune best man. What does he represent? What has he done? What does he do? When you are able to answer your questions correctly, getting information will be very, very easy for you. In fact, you'll be in your room. People will call you, Fortune, see the player with the sign. See the player with the sign. See what they happen. You even go to their camp and nobody will disturb you because they, you have already created a niche for yourself. So for me, like I said, I started about 20 years ago, you know, just being a young guy, going to cover the league with my own money. Of course, that time it was fashion. I knew the players. The players would normally see me. Ah, oh boy, you can't cover our match. Yes, how you doing? So sometimes you meet the players to introduce yourself, do one or two interviews, put it on your, your Twitter, go to the game, register with Swan, find a senior colleague, find a senior colleague in Port Harcourt that you can learn under, because I learned under people for two. So for example, you can meet China at and say, China, I'm a young guy. I want to learn this thing. I want to be involved in this thing. I want to be a niche for myself around this thing. Or meet Sammy Virginia, 
Sami, uh, who is the facilitator for this, can link you up with Rivers United. You start going for the training, you start knowing the players by name, by face, you introduce yourself to the coach. Just do something positive around the club. It will open doors for you. So when you go for training, you see this player, ah, where this player comes from? Ah, this player, like that's where we sign from Gombe or for Benjel Insurance. After training, you interview the player. That's how you begin to create a niche for yourself. In fact, players will now start calling our boss at the Mr. So Club next week. You already have that information. So you, first of all, you need to be able to create something, aura, something around yourself as a person. Let people see what you have done. Let people see what you are doing. Yeah. You get So when, when they're able to understand who this person is, information will come very, very uh, easy for you. And that's why I always tell, especially the younger people, uh, create a niche for yourself, create a brand for yourself. Let people know you. Don't sit at home and just be tweeting. No, go out there. I do that a lot. Go out there. Let people know you. Uh, best man, I beg your pardon. What he represents, what he can do. So the little information you get, you keep putting it out there, you know, so that people can see and learn. It's as easy as that dancing. Uh, John Peters. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, Hello, sir. sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very you, much. Yes, thank you, sir. Please, sir, follow up from the last uh, statement you made. You mean it is possible for someone who is not a licensed uh, journalist a licensed um, a sports writer to walk into players like that, uh, not, not even among the players, even in other fields. You just walk in without uh, proper licensing and start interviewing people. You, uh, do you mean that uh, you'll be accepted that way, that you'll not be harassed? I just want to know, sir. Thank you. So, so like I said, uh, you don't have to be licensed. I say, what you need to do is to join the association and then make yourself known. For example, we have freelancers that don't work for any organization, per se. You know, they are freelance. There's what we call freelance. So, but these people, you have to attach yourself to either the Nigerian Union of Journalists or you join up with the Sports Writers Association of Nigeria. And then, like I earlier said, find somebody to mentor you, somebody to introduce you into the clique. For example, there are two people I'm working with. I normally carry them along when I'm going to cover games. I introduce them to people. These are young guys that I'm trying to encourage in the business. I want them to grow in the business. So once you are can, somebody can identify you with one person, you might not necessarily work for a radio station or a TV station or a newspaper or a website. You can be freelance, have your own blog, open your own website and be putting stuff out there. So you can go and say, Hello, I'm social person. I'm the owner of social website. This is what I do. This is what I do. Now, not everybody belongs to the sports writers of the of Nigeria, but I always encourage people. Try and find someone that can hold your hand. Somebody that can put you through. I mentioned China Achebe. I mentioned Sami Virginia. There's Carlo Rakwe. There are a lot of people in Portaco. That is where, that's where you stay. That can hold your hand, especially if they think you're a reasonable person and take you to places, introduce you to people gradually. As you go one week, two weeks, three weeks, people begin to know, you. oh, this person is from Sami. Ah, this person is from Mr. Cherry. You know, it will begin to open doors for you, open doors for you. Then one day you'll be able to stand on your own. So those are some of the ways you do. I was introduced in, in 1999. You know, somebody, Abraham Abdi Mohammed took me to the studio and told the, uh, the guy there, said, listen, this guy knows a lot of football. I want him to be part of your show. And that's how it started from in 1999. So it, 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 it's, it's something similar. I understand what you mean. You can't just pop up somewhere and say, see within I want, nobody will listen to you because they might think you're an imposter or something related to that. So find somebody, or most importantly, start writing. Start tweeting football, start writing, start tweeting football. If you have a blog, blog. If you have a website, do it. If you have social media, keep putting out football related content, you know? You've seen Rivers United play. What do you think about Rivers United winning the league title? The players you've seen play, which of them 
cut your fancy. So when you start the writing and start writing, there's something that people can look at. Okay, now you be this person, where write that thing? Uh, or you are sure all the evidence of what you they do? Uh, who, are you that person? Yes. Are you uh, Mr. Uh, who is the person now? Mr. John Peters. Are you? Who is Mr. John Peters? Who did this? Who did that? Are you the Mr. John? Yes. And slowly but surely, you pick up from there. But there are two key things here. Start writing. Start talking. Open a YouTube channel. Record videos about Rivers United of Football in Nigeria. Put it there. Open your Twitter. Open your Facebook. Open your Instagram. Write about Rivers United. Write about Benjamin Insurance. That's for those in sports anyway. Write about Chelsea yourself if you want. You know. Write about clubs. Just break things down. Start doing and analyzing football and all whatnot. And gradually, before you know it, people will be like, ah, there's this person that writes this and that. So you create a following like that. And before you know it, maybe Rivers United will call you, come and join our media team. Or what can you do? Or something like that. There's Charles Mayuku, who is the Rivers United media officer. You can also reach out to him. Reach out to Sammy Wijanya, who has worked with Rivers United. That's if you're a particular person anyway. So these are some of the things you can do to, to put you in a good road to wherever it is you want to reach sports-wise. It's the same thing that happened to me. I talk sports. They're like, who is this guy? Who is this small boy talking football in 1999? You know? And then all of a sudden, before you know, somebody calls me. Uh, can you come to South, South Africa for this thing, for that thing? And then before I know, another person will call me. And then I had to leave Nigeria for a while. You know? When I came back, they're like, oh, boy, are you back here? Oh, yeah, come and join Super Sports, man. You know? I, I don't think I've ever applied for any sport in the in Nigeria. I don't think so. I just get calls, oh boy. So so person say, could call you. Come and do this thing for us. A lot of times, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden the, the president of the Nigerian Football Federation called me one time in 2019, and he wants me to be the middle officer for the final goals. And that's how it started, you know, till I left last year, sorry, early this year. And then I've been working for the league management company, the LMC for about four or five years now. And most of the things I do is remote. I'm in my bedroom doing most of these things. Sorry about the break. I think we lost our lecture. Can you hear me? Can you know hear me? Yes, I Yes. Yes, I can hear you. 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 Okay, I think we lost our lecture. Let's just hold on for a while and see if you join us. Maybe a call came in or something. Okay, ma. Okay. Okay. So if anyone has questions, you can still drop your questions or indicate with your hands up. And he will attend to you when he's back. Let me quickly contact him. Uh, hello. Hello, yes, sir. Hello, sir. Um, okay, sorry. I I went. My network went blank for a, for a minute. So I, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. Okay. So I hope I have any other question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank okay. you, sir. Okay. My question is this, sir. Like uh, on Facebook, yes, sir. Uh, those uh, those uh, sponsored uh, adverts. Mm. So I uh, I don't know how they come about it. One day I was just trying to to see if I can uh, get to how they do it. Then mm. uh, I began to fumble on the Facebook until I get to a stage, you no, know, 
prepared. I want to. I wanted to advertise my advertise my own product. So mm. I get to a stage where they said I should uh, input my my ATM uh, number so that they mm. would draw the the the, the advert money from there. So mm. at that point, I became scared. I became scared. How, how will I drop my my ATM details? So how safe is it? And secondly, uh, on Twitter as well, they will ask me to if I want to promote my uh, my tweet. How do mm. I also go about uh, uh, promoting the tweet? That's my question, sir. Okay, and usually the Facebook ads they are not free. Twitter promotion is not free. You have to pay a token. So what I normally advise people to do is always, this is what I do, on my subscriptions, Netflix, I don't do Twitter, I don't do tutorial promotions or Facebook ads, but I've done that once or twice. But what I do is I have a card that I don't have more than 10,000 Naira inside. For example, Facebook ads is between 10 and $15 or thereabout. If you convert that to Nigerian money, it's probably 6,500. So I have an account that I put money specifically for Netflix, anything I'm doing online. It is when I want to do stuff that I take the monies and put it there. Now, if you're on Facebook and you follow due process, it's very safe. Twitter comes with a secured panel that you pay and you're fine, just like what you do for Netflix. It's the same thing. Even on Google Play, most of the apps that I buy, I already have a card that is attached to my Google Play and I've never had any problems with it. So any app I buy is in Naira. There's Facebook Nigeria, there's Facebook Twitter. They remove your monies, either based on the dollar equivalent or they take it out in Naira, like what Netflix does. So it's very, very safe. But I always tell people, any account you have, make sure you place the account based on what you want to do. Don't carry your salary account and tie it on the internet. Now, Facebook might be safe. Twitter might be safe. Google Play might be safe. Netflix might be safe. But the internet generally is not safe. So there might be somebody tracking you somewhere, especially Facebook. They hack a lot of Facebook accounts if you, have, if you don't have two or three factor authentication. So you first of all need to know that your Facebook has two factor or three factor authentication first before you do any transaction there. But I've never had any problems with them. But the secret for me, and I always advise people, is anything you are doing online, have one account. Don't have more than 10,000 or 15,000 Naira inside. For example, any, any, any subscription I'm paying abroad, even if I have zero Naira in that account, I go and remove the equivalent of that money from any of my accounts and put it into that account. So if I lose 10,000 Naira or 15,000 Naira, it's not a problem, at least for me. But I can assure you that if you have, if your Facebook is secured, it's not a problem. If your Twitter is secured, it's not a problem. It doesn't, I've never had any issues related to Facebook ads, Twitter promotions, uh, Google Play. I use an Android phone, Google Play or Netflix. So that, that's how I work. But I can guarantee you that if you have all those uh, uh, authentication levels, you'll be fine. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I've done just my question, sir. OK, thank you. So I'll take one last question before, before I round up. Uh, NM Abasi. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, so please, uh, my question goes this way. You know, you've said that you've worked with NFF, um, LMC, mm. and some organization. This organization that some days, hello, sir, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Yeah, this is organization that some days information comes out and it raises the dust, and mm. they need people to to clear the dust, to clear the so, um the audience, let them know what is really going on. And you are like, you are like because of what you're doing, you're like the face behind the marks. But mm. the, the the organization will actually tell you, go, you have this publicity, you have this audience. And so how mm. do you do this to that? How do you how do you how do you how do you balance this information? Say so it will not also affect your own personal social media um platform because I think if people are really trusting you for what you are doing and you based on mm. your what the content you are creating, information you are giving, and mm. then they don't trust NFF or they don't trust LMC because of 
what they are doing. But because of the one that is speaking for LMT, they might say, okay, so like this guy is the same with demo. That means how do you mm. balance that? How do you come out from that? Like, it do not affect your own traffic. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate that uh, some of these people respect me as a person and what I do. And so they try, I, you know, most of the things that they try to put out, I try to uh, let them know, I curate it to the way I want so that at the end of the day, the questions will be less than more, you know. Nigerians are very, when it comes to football, Nigerians are very aggressive, especially if they don't understand something or they think something should go a certain way and the thing does not go that way. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, last, last season, not this one that passed, the previous season, Rivers United had a case against Jigawa Golden Stars. And then from the rules and framework of the league management company, the, the rules stated something different. I mean, and then the Nigerian Football Federation's uh, uh, disciplinary committee brought out something different. Now, there were a lot of people that were very upset, especially from Port Harcourt, that Rivers United were denied that particular spot in the first instance. So what I had to do was to put out something from the league management company related to the information on the book that has the rules and framework that the LMC have to follow. And that's what I put out. And unfortunately, Nigerians, uh, the ignorance that is pervading around our football, a lot of people think they know, but they don't know. And I ask the people, please go and carry this book. Go to the website. It's free for everybody to download and read. This is what we're supposed to do. So, so, so things happen. So based on that, Rivers United have no case. But when you went to the NFF, unfortunately, the, the disciplinary committee, which is independent of NFF themselves, said some, they interpreted it in a different way, which was quite different from the rule book. So when it came back to us, we now said, okay, listen, this is what happened based on the O and D. And the O and D from the NFF is superior to what we are going to say because the LMC is an arm of the NFF. So I was able to calm that one down. People who know me personally know I'm a man of integrity. I have never had a situation where something happened and I had to lie about it. They, all of them know I will, never, I will never put out something like that. I will never do that. So if they bring it to me and I see that this thing is not correct, I carry it, I tell them, oh God, this thing is not correct. Let us put it this way. Let us put it that way. And most of the time, since I started doing stuff with them, I've never had any issues based on uh, NFF this or LMC that. One thing you have to understand is when you are working or you are doing stuff from the top, it's very, very different from the bottom. Most people work with emotions, not facts, especially Nigerians. They work with emotions, not facts. So for me, as far as I am not lying to people deliberately, as far as the facts are out there, you know, okay, let me even give you an example. A lot of people don't like Amaju Pinik. They say it's arrogant. They say it's this, is this, is that. Nigeria did not qualify for the World Cup, which is correct, which is very correct. I will never go online and say Nigeria did not qualify for the World Cup. You get, but since I've known the NFF, Amaju Pinik has been the one that has brought the most monies to Nigerian Football Federation. That one is a fact. I'm not making it up. Again, people don't understand that if you are in camp with players, if you follow them to travel, if you take a flight, if a chartered aircraft from airpiece to Morocco, how much does it cost? Don't forget, Nigeria has our under 20 female, under 17 female, super falcons, super eagles, under 20, under 23, Chan team, under 17, beach sand eagles, futsal. How much do you think from your own little understanding do you need in one year to take care of all these people? There's camp allowance, there's match bonus, there's traveling, there's a lot of things. Now, if they don't pay the super eagles, it's not because they do not want to pay them or they have eaten the money, it's not true. Because if I was from the outside, now waiting, I go talk. But I've been from the outside, I've been in the inside, I don't see plenty of things. But for a typical Nigerian fan, as far as the Super Eagles do not qualify for the World Cup, NFF is corrupt. Amaju Pinik is corrupt. I'm not saying it is 100%, but the things I have seen, 
There might be some small, small uh, hand change because it's Nigeria. Is this NFF is run as a civil service, the secretariat. So definitely things will happen. But what I'm talking about is strictly the, the national teams. So to answer your question and to be more direct, I have never been in a situation where I had to lie and then defend the lie. If I get anything on my table, I curate it to the way I feel people will accept or see, re although there are many people that will not see reason anyway. Uh -huh. No matter what you do, even in your personal life, no matter what you do for some family members, they will still not like you. So that one is always going to be there. But I've been very lucky. I have not had a situation where I had to lie to people. Sometimes when I did some things from the DM or some of the things people say, in the beginning, you know, it was <laughs> it was a bit difficult for me to comprehend. How can somebody be talking like this? This person drink me. Nah, now, did he smoke weed or how can somebody, you know, people even insult you. Insult. They'll go on the handle. Some of them know it's me, but they'll be like, you're very stupid for treating this. You're very stupid for saying that. At the point, it was, I was like, nah, I don't tire for this. But after a while, I just knew it was just emotions. Because if those people actually knew the facts as I knew it, they will not treat like that. Or they will treat like that because they don't like the LMC or the people that are there. We, we have them around. It's everywhere. Even in, in, in your working place, there are people that will not like you. They will even go and make people have bad belly against you. So it's normal. Once it comes to social media, you need to find a way to be able to accept criticism, whether it's due or not. And then you move ahead. You cannot even dwell on them. That's the truth of the matter. Some of them that know me, they'll be like, okay, Zaranda. You know, it's not a problem. So that's how it is. It's it's not easy, but I've been able to find a way to ignore the noise and then take corrections in some places. Uh, Chibuiz, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, sir. It's gospel, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, gospel, gospel. I beg your pardon, gospel. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so our time is fast spent. Uh, or do we take one more question? Okay, so we to... still, so we still have two questions. I, Bril, okay. Bril's hand is up. Then we also have a question in the chat box. Okay, so uh, read out the question in the chat box first. Let me tackle that, and then we take we take the last question. I think that's Bril, have you? Yes. Okay, okay from so, the so... chat box. Also, yes, Emmanuel, he said, what has been the greatest challenge you faced in your career so far? And what has been your biggest achievement in your career? Ah, biggest challenge, my green passport. The Nigerian passport is, has been my biggest challenge, to be honest with you. You know, there are sometimes you get invitations to go to an event, to go and do something. And then that passport becomes a problem. You have to go apply for visa, do this one, do that one. So then my, my Nigerian passport has been my biggest issue. When I was in the UK, I had a resident permit. And that resident permit gave me a leeway to get different visas. So I could go to Spain. I could go to an embassy today. Next week, I get my visa. And I'm in uh, Holland. And I'm in Spain. And I, you know, that Schengen was very easy to get. So you could just pop in because they know that you have a, a resident permit in England, it was easy for me to get visas to go do work, you know? And then uh, it's just a little bit difficult having that Nigerian passport. It's been one of my, my, my biggest issues. Uh, two years ago, I was supposed to go to France for a tournament with some kids. And then, you know, when we got to the embassy, I had a previous Schengen, which I used to go to the under 20 World Cup in Poland and Germany. But by the time I got to the embassy, not embassy, rather, the VFS, that's what they call them, the people that process the visa. There was a lot of problems related to the kids. I had a Schengen before, in fact, two Schengens, but the kids couldn't get. And because we went as a group, I didn't get two. So it was very sad. And, and that's the first time I've ever been refused visa in my life. And it was because I went with kids who had virgin passports and all that, you know. So... You know, it was very demoralizing. So I would say being Nigerian and having a Nigerian passport has been very difficult, especially when you go out. Uh, one time I went for an event in Amsterdam with uh, some other, I was the only black person on the trip. It was like a class trip, we were 12. So the, the guys at immigration at the Schiphol, that's the, the airport in Amsterdam stopped me. Every other person passed, I was the last person. They were like, I should wait. 
started asking me some funny questions. And meanwhile, everybody was at the other side waiting for me. You know, so that's been my 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 biggest regret. Uh, my best moment. Ah, this one plenty. Uh, how will I put this? Okay, let me give a bit of context. When I was growing up, I was playing football. I always wanted to go professional, but uh, around year two thousand, I was in Oman. Oman is near Saudi Arabia. So I had an injury, I had to come back to Nigeria. So that dream of playing for Nigeria died in the year 2000. So in 2019, I went to the World Cup as the media officer of Nigeria, the under 20 World Cup. And then I was there in Nigeria's colors, the green and white. And then when it was time for the national anthem, I now stood up. So that was a very, very memorable, you know, my hand on my chest. You know the way the players do? All of us were lining up and we're singing the national anthem. That was in, um, in Poland. We were playing Qatar. That day we won. We won three zero. It was one of the best days in my life. Wearing the national colors, hands on my chest, which is what I was always dreamed since I was five or six years old, playing for Nigeria. But I was not playing. I was an official now. You know, my hand on my chest, singing the national anthem. The cameras and everything were on me and the other players. It was really, really exciting. And I, for me, I, I'm not sure anything can beat that. Too. I, I, there's a lot. Too, but I really think that, that was the best, you know, because at that point, you know, you know, my wife took photos of that period and I was almost crying. I know it sounds funny, but anytime I go outside and Nigeria is playing and I put my hand on my chest to sing the national anthem, it's always, it's always nice. But that particular one, that first group game against Qatar, you know, lining up for Nigeria, wearing the Nigerian kits, your uh, your your hands on your your chest, singing the national anthem, has to be the best experience ever. I had goosebumps, to be honest. I was looking at the stadium, and my head, I'm like, out of the whole Nigerians that could have been here, God has said, okay, Andy, you're going to be here. You know, it was surreal. So that probably has to be the best. You know. That has to be the best, to be honest with you. Then the second one has to be when, when I was embedded with the South African national team, Bafana Bafana, in 2015, when they went to play Niger Republic in Yami. I was with the team. I trained with the team. I ate with the team, recorded videos, did text analysis for uh, the South African team because their media officer was having problems to get visa from South Africa to, to Niger. So Supersport called me. I should go to, because I didn't need a, a visa to go to Niger. So that was a beautiful experience. I met a lot of guys. Uh, and and Dile Jali, Sifiwe Shabalala, the, goal that, the guy that scored South Africa's goal 2010, their first goal at the World Cup, had meals with them. So that, that one too, I can never forget. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, sir. So I think the last question is from Brio. Bill, if you're there, if you can hear us, unmute your mic and ask your question. So, good morning. How will you? My name is Bill. How will you secure your um, social media platform? Thank you. Uh, how will I secure in the sense that people don't hack it? Or what do you mean? So that people don't hack it, yes. Um, I think I've answered this before. You need to, what, what, what many platforms do these days, even WhatsApp, is to give you a, a chance to authenticate your, your account. So it's either two-factor or three-factor authentication where they might ask or request for either a, a memorable word or something you can remember easily. They're connected to your email, they're connected to your phone and all that. So except the person who is trying to hack your account gets an OTP. And again, you have to be very careful. Sometimes you are sitting down, you get a message asking you to, to tap on an OTP to claim your account or something. If you make that mistake, as far as you are not the one that requested for an OTP, kindly ignore the message. So number one is be very careful. Don't click on any link you see anyhow. That's one. If it's not a link that you went to look out for, even if it is your friend that sent you a link that does not look legit, if the tiny URL does not look legit or that www is not there. Most tiny realers are bots. Bots are things that open up your space for people to be able to hack into your laptop or your phone. So number one to be very careful what link you open. Number two, always make sure that all your apps 
or your 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 social media have two or three factor authentication very important and number three don't go to anywhere if you just see any useless pop-up on your phone just close it you don't have to open it and then most of the apps that we use they are not paid for they come in ads try and close them don't always want to open apps that you did not i mean ads that you did not request for so those are some of the things you have to do to be safe on social media don't click on unnecessary links that's one number two make sure that you have two or three factor authentication almost every uh, almost every almost every app have that these days and number four be very wary of the type of uh, pop-ups that you you click on on your social media if you can do these three things i can guarantee you that you'll be fine whatever you do on social media thank you Okay, so I think we still have one more question. Some, someone sent another question in the chat box. Okay. So okay, from, from Chuku Divine Akelachi. His question is, what are the steps to take to get to your level? I have a dream of becoming a professional football journalist. Can I reach you on social media? I think that's two questions in one. I've already put my my Twitter and my Instagram on the chat, so you can pick you can pick my Twitter, and my Instagram uh, there. You can send me a DM uh, there. Then we we discuss it. Look, every, everybody can be anything they want to be. You can be much much bigger than me. There are people that I I mentored, and they are now bigger than me, in the sense that they've got more followers, uh, you know, more brand sponsorships and things like that. So yes, it's very very possible. But you have to be humble. You have to be hardworking. Uh, you have to learn to build your social media organically so that you sustain your followers in the sense that you have to put out content that is very engaging, content, uh, content that is exciting. So you keep working, you know, think about your niche area. Are you going to talk about the Super Eagles, Nigerian football, or you are more of an European football uh, person? Even your European football, a lot of people Twitter or create content around that. What are you going to do to make you a little bit different from what other people are doing? So you need to start thinking of being very creative. When you're in your room, just sit down. Are you going to be a stats person for European leagues or a stats person for the Nigerian league? So there's a lot you need to start thinking about. Uh, you know, get creative. Uh, think of areas you can key into. Do a lot of research. What is Randa doing? What is Virginia doing? What is China doing? What is Charles doing? What is Godwin and Ekana doing? Okay, this is what they're doing. What can I do differently? There's a guy called Sam. Uh, in, in, in a pardon. Sam, uh, he's into stats. So anything statistics, Nigerian professional football league, everybody knows that he's the go-to guy, you know, and he has a, he's building a, gradually building a, for, uh, a good following for himself, stats-wise. When was the last time this thing happened? Uh, Rivers United played 38 matches, they had 10 goals, this one, that one, doing for graphics, or Chijoki Akuneto was the first person to score in the second half in 10 consecutive games, that kind of stuff. So look for areas that you think people are not too into and try and create a niche around that and make it your own. So yes, it's very possible for you to be much bigger than me, but you have to be creative, you have to be humble, you have to persevere, you have to keep, you know, keep writing, keep curating, keep creating. And hopefully one day you'll blow, <laughs> you know, and uh, of course you'll be able to make a proper living off, off social media, which is uh, the prayer basically. And then, like I said, um, for everybody, not just for him. My Instagram and Twitter is on the chat. So uh, if you have any further questions or you want to interact, you can just send me a DM on those ones. You follow, send a DM and we start talking, you know. So my, my Twitter is verified. So there's a lot we can do. So if, if well, there's a lot you can do, we can talk about it. As far as you, you're in genuinely interested in taking it a step further, I think we should be able to, uh sort things out from there so yes i hope i hope i've done justice to to your question all right sir thank you but i'm seeing a hand of jean uh, is here i don't know if you can take her question okay okay jane you can go ahead and good morning once again sir Good morning, 
I have a question that has been disturbing me for a while now. Okay. When you talk about uh, sports, there are a lot of games associated with sports, mm. such as tennis, cricket, etc. So my mm. question is, why do we have more of football journalism mm. in sports than other aspects of sports? Does it mean that those tennis are not creative enough for one to go into it? Sorry, so your question is, why are there more sports journalists in football no, than no. Oh, no, yes, football journalists in quotes than other aspects of sports, such as uh, tennis, cricket, and et cetera. It's the, the answer is very simple now. Okay. The answer is very simple. Which sport is the most popular sport in, in Nigeria, or the whole world, in fact? Uh, it's football, but for me, sir, I love tennis. That's really why I ask this question. No, there, there's nothing wrong in loving tennis. I'm just trying to answer your question. There's nothing wrong in, in loving tennis, you get. I'm just answering your question. The truth of the matter is more people are interested in, in football than since we were kids, football has always been there. You hardly find, you can have an open field and you see children playing football, but it's, it's very difficult to find an open field and then you find uh, children playing tennis. So it's a matter of how you grew up. It's a function of how you grew up uh, and then the facilities available. You know, but that is not to say that uh, that uh, tennis is bad. No, we have a lot of people who love tennis and actually make a living out of the tennis. There's uh, Latifa Adebayo, there's Biola Omowale, uh, Chuku, who are very, very uh, vested in, in lawn tennis and table tennis. Like uh, Latifa is the, Latifa is the media officer for, for Africa, for International Table Tennis Federation, and she's um, association, is it Feder ITTF, Table Tennis Federation, and she's a Nigerian. So there are a lot of people that do table tennis, a lot of people that do sports, but it's not as, uh, as many as, as uh, football. We also have basketball people too, you know? So it's very, very good. And I actually encourage you, if you like, you said long tennis or is it table tennis? Table tennis, sir. Yes, I actually encourage, please, it's, let me tell you, ba, because there are not too many people involved in table tennis, it will be much easier for you to break into that circle, especially if you're a lady. Okay. The only lady I know that does table tennis in Nigeria, that covers table tennis, in fact, because of her love for table tennis, she's now the media officer of uh, 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 International Table Tennis Association Africa. You get so she, she goes all over Africa covering events. She's the media officer and she has a team under her. So uh, I will give you her, I will drop her. Uh, okay, send me a DM on, on Twitter and I will give okay. you her, her Twitter address. And then I'll talk to her that there's a lady. Where do you live? I live in Portafort, sir. I'll tell her the social lady who is interested in table tennis so she can mentor you. Okay. And then she's the only person that I know that constantly is on table tennis and lawn tennis and tennis and sorry they don't call it lawn tennis again you know and because of what she has done the kind of content she puts out she's been able to get a position from the international table tennis uh, federation as the media coordinator for the international table tennis federation africa okay. so today she's in egypt tomorrow she's in tunisia uh algeria south africa like that you know doing her thing and she's 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 making it and they pay her in dollars not naira I, well i think it's dollars anyway not naira so it's it's a very niche position so for everybody listening football is not the only thing there are other sports you can do my own is like my passion is football and basketball so you can go into tennis you can go into badminton we don't have we have people that cover uh racket sports but we are not much there's other there's this guy called Dare kuti kuti covers combat sports and volleyball. So karate, judo, taekwondo, that's his forte. So you need to look at areas. If you think football is too saturated, you have to start picking interest in other sports that can create a niche for you. So if people know if it's badminton news we're looking for in Africa or West Africa or Nigeria, this is the person they're going to go to. I hope I've answered your question. Hello? Uh, Victoria, I think she's I, gone. 
Okay, I think we lost Jane. Well, that's very okay. And it's really it's really a good thing she asked that question. I, I had that question in mind, but sometimes that was earlier when we started the class and I forgot. That's the reason why we should be writing our questions. And I'm so happy she, she we discussed it the day we met. And I'm glad I also have interest in basketball and all the rest, but it's nice. So thank you so much, sir. If, I, if you I, want, so anybody apart from the football people, anybody that wants that has a niche area basketball, tennis, table tennis, badminton, combat sports, you can send me a DM and I'll try and link you up with those that are up there with the sports that are related to what you want to do. And then I'll, I'll try to ask them to see if they can find ways to mentor you. But of course, you have to be serious because I will not ask anybody to mentor somebody who is not serious. So, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so um, so let me just round up now so that we can go and do other things that we want to do. I have another meeting now. So basically, content creation is all about putting out stuff there that will interest people, uh, make people engage with what you do, and then hopefully, you know, build a good following for yourself. Now, if your content is good, if your content is exciting, if your content is catchy, if your content is what people want to see, they will keep looking forward to seeing more content from you. And the more content they try to get from you, your analytics, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or TikTok or whatever it is. And I think TikTok is another thing that people have uh, not put their eyes on per se. You know, so you have to keep working hard, keep thinking of ideas. Don't make your, your content boring. So what's what you do, even if you work in an office, your own private social media should be about stuff that will promote you as a person, what you do as a person. So that at the end of the day, like Victoria, for example, maybe by next year, she'll be able to build a large following and people will know that, okay, if we're looking for some sort of thing, this is a page to go to. They might try to go to our YouTube to look for uh, content, just either for fun or for information or for education or whatever it is. So it's a very, very important area of the media that, especially in these times, everything is migrating to online, online, online. And then people are looking for uh, key areas and niches that they can, that can catch that will, uh, you know, create things for them. So I think we should be able to look at those things and do better in that regard. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can follow me on, like I said, uh, Adranda Andrew. The description is on the chat um, for Twitter, for Instagram. Uh, you can follow me. There's mostly football related. Uh, yes, I'm putting those things that are from the professional side that you can uh, link up with me and then we take it up from there. Thank you very much and have a lovely day, everybody. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so guys, I think we've come to the end of the class. I know some of us did not get the his our lecturer's social media handle, so I can also share it for you. I screenshotted it earlier when he shared it with us. So. We will meet in class on WhatsApp. Please make sure you do your assignment. Thank you. Okay, so I'm ending the class already. Thank you.